Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to ride this victory right on through this session. Right here in this classroom today, we're going to ride this victory right on through. We're going to do a step. We're going to start our victory out in terms of discussing step six, which is on page 103. Major called the victory. I believe that we're going to have the, we got the victory, and so we're going to move forth victoriously. Yes, we are. And we're at, again, we're at step number six. And step number six is, is a real good step because, it, as I remember, it said our deepest work starts in step number six. We may have, uh, be of the belief, having done steps one, two, three, four, and five, that we're just about there, that everything is turned around, uh, that we, we've got a sufficient foundation to start to build our lives all over again. But step number six takes us just a little bit deeper in the recovery process. And where, where we go in terms of step number six is that we, we develop a concrete spiritual relationship with Christ as our Lord and Savior. And I like this word. You're going to see this as we talk about the power passage in terms of step number six. The word Lord. And, and, and it's good that they use that term. You look, let's look on page 103. It's very good that we use the term Lord. And, and, it, and it's so appropriate because what it does, it puts us in a mind frame of the deep work that we're about to uh, 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 get involved into in terms of our relationship with Christ. What we find out is, is that he's Lord over everything that we've discovered and identified and discussed and examined in terms of step one through five. Even those things where it seems like it's intimidating, it's awesome, it's a, it's a humongous job, you feel as though you, it may be overwhelming to you. The good part of all of that, once we come to step number six, is that we see that we have, that, that ex entering into a relationship with Christ is our personal Lord and Savior. He's Lord, he's bigger, he has power over all of those areas of our life. And when we say all of them, as we look at this power, as we look at the step itself in terms of step number six, it, it, it focuses in on all of it in terms of God being Lord and Savior and Deliverer in terms of opening up a way or making a way out of no way in terms of everything that we've discovered having done steps one through five about ourselves that, there's, that he has power and control over every aspect of our life. So in step number six, we're going to give him control. We're going to acknowledge that he has control and we're going to work with the control that God gives us. So that moves us into the spiritual aspect of the step. I said all that to say that. We're about to move into the spiritual aspects of growing up in Christ spiritually with, with, the, with, with a newfound relationship that we have. Now let's look at step number six. Let's put all that mumble jumble to work. <coughs> Let's look at step number six. Who would like to read the step itself first? Two things I want to bring out. The first one is in terms of the step itself, if you notice the term entirely. I mean, we're bringing everything entirely to the Lord, understanding that he's, he has control and power and authority over everything, again, that we've discovered, having done steps one through five. He has control, he is in control, and uh, he will direct us, guide us, protect us, and forgive us for things that were out of control in terms of what we discussed with our behavior, with our lifestyle, where we come from. Uh, issues and circumstances, as we have women here, which I really want to pay attention to. Uh, we've got women that may have been separated from their, from their children for whatever reason. God has control over that. Women that want a better life for their children than what, they ha than what they've experienced up, for not, up, up to this point for themselves. They want a better job. God has control over that. They want their kids to go to school with, with, with uh, having fully been, uh, their appetite have been satisfied, having food, roof uh, over their head and, and not worrying, uh, uh, will you, can you provide what's necessary for them kids to be healthy, uh, for them kids to have the support that they need? God has control over all of that. Lastly, in terms of relationship, no one wants to be alone. Obviously, if, when we enter into a relationship with Christ, he, he comforts us, he takes care of our I want to see our emotional needs, but he also can take care of us, which is new. 
And this, this is when you really put to the test women as well as men. We all have that desire to, to want to have uh, a set intimacy with the opposite sex. Well, sometimes you're not in position to do that. Well, God is Lord over that situation. He can get you through that situation too. But what we must understand is, is that we, we, have to le we have to lean less on our, have less reliance on us and more reliance on God. And it's not so much as a touchy, touchy, feely, feely type thing. And those concerns are all legitimate concerns. As we get into step number six, we're going to see that it's, it's more so of, of growing up a spiritual relationship and power that Christ gives us as we recognize that, that, he, that he's in control over all those areas that, we just, that I've just mentioned as well. So uh, step number six really puts us in the right frame of mind. It says entirety. And that means just that every concern that we have, we're ready to have God removed. And he, and he mentions it a second time. All these defects of characters. What I'd like for you to do, uh, and let's turn to, I want to say Romans. Let's look at Romans. I think it's Romans chapter 5. I think that'll put us into the right frame of mind in terms of the growth that's about to take place. In terms of... of when somebody finds it, please give the page. I've got a different Bible. Man, I'm mad. 703. 1103. When I said Romans. Let me. Romans, is it wrong? Okay, let's go a little bit further. Romans chapter 8. Okay. That's where we're going to do this. Yes, yes, yes. And we're going to start at chapter, we're going to start at Romans chapter 8. And this has everything to do to the new growth that we're about to enter into. The new level of, of, of recovery mind mindset that we're about to enter into uh, in terms of the spiritual growth and the, and the hard work or the, or the new work that's about to take place in relationship with our relationship with Christ and him uh, in terms of we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects and characters that we've identified having done steps one through five and here's, here's where we're going to get an understanding of what this new growth is all about. I'll start at verse number chapter eight verse number five and here it is, as I read. Are we all on the same page? Mm -hmm. So it says, for they that are after the flesh, doing the things that we want to do, doing the things that we, we used to doing on our own, do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, this is this new growth, this new relationship we're about to enter into. Uh, the things of the spirit. So now we must have the mind of Christ. Let's move down to the verse number six. For to be carnally minded or fleshly minded is death. We tried it our way, doing it, doing it the way we think it should work out. And the end of that is death. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Life and peace. How many people would, how many women in here can actually say that they would give anything at certain times just to have some peace of mind? Hmm. Hmm. You try it, men as well. You try everything that you possibly and humanly possibly can for you and your kids to have some what? Peace of mind. How do we achieve peace of mind? He's telling us right here to be spiritually minded, to have the mind of Christ. Let's move on a little bit further. And then it says in verse 7, after we understand where to get life and peace, verse 7 it says, because the carnal mind, which most of us know is doing it our way, is enmity or, or it, enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be okay it's in rebellion to, to, to God so if we try and do it our way we actually are in, in rebellion or warring against God in terms of having that peace of mind that we're looking for when we try and do it our way by the flesh this is why I'm saying our deepest growth is happening right here spiritually <coughs> verse number 8 <coughs> so it says so then Having understood that the difference between the flesh and the spirit and, and desiring to have peace of mind. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please what? God. Have you ever tried everything that you can and just seem like it ain't working out? Yes. Man, my, my, what else? Like, I'm really giving it to the ladies. Like, what else can I do? I've given this man everything that I could possibly give, and I've done everything that I could possibly do inside, uh, outside of him. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm doing everything I can for my kids, and it just seems like nothing is working the heck out. 
It's saying that the only component that's missing is our relationship, that spiritual relationship, that spiritual growth that we need with Christ. Let's move a little bit further. Can I please God? Verse number nine. And so what we've done up from verse five to verse number eight is we're learning the difference between being carnally minded and spiritually minded. We're going into verse number nine now. <laughs> Or fleshly minded and spiritually minded. This is where our deepest work is going to occur. Verse 9 says, but ye are not in the flesh. Having worked this program, we understand it. But in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now that if any man have not, or woman, have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You have no peace of mind. That's one of the, it, it sounds so simple, but it's so, it, 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 it's, it's, it's so crucial to understand that peace of mind comes from having a, a spiritual relationship with God. We're learning how to do that when we get up to number step number six. Let's go a little bit further. It says, uh, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness and faithfulness, we want to say. We're living a spiritual life. Verse number 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up. Now listen to this. Let's look at our book before I go any further. On page 103. Let's get this together. Let's get this together. On page 103. Now here's the connection. In verse number 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up. It's about whatever's on you. You're about to raise it up off of you. By being spiritual. Now let's look at look at look at this look at, look at this step. I mean the power passage right beneath the step. It says, "Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will what up." Uh, man, is that not compatible or what? I got hold on, hold on, hold on. That lip. Let's look at this verse eleven. But if that is the qualification, is He in you? If He's in you, He'll lift you up. This is what He says. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead, even though your situation may look really dead right now, dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies, your fleshy bodies, by his spirit that dwell in you. Okay? And um, verse number 13. For if, the, for if he live after the flesh, and I'm going to end it at 13, ye shall die. How many of y'all remembered what we just got through saying? As hard, looked like I was just doing everything the right way for the right reason, and it just looked like it ain't working out. Like, what else can I do? You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I, I stopped drinking. I stopped using drugs. I, I ain't lying no more. I'm trying to do it. I'm looking for a job. But the only component that's missing is that spiritual component, step number six, that deep work and relationship, to, uh, that spiritual relationship that's going to raise all those burdens up off you. We're going to go a little bit further. 13. For if he, if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you live through the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, who you shall live. Don't you want to live? Yeah. In all those areas where you had the experience defeat, there's life in the midst of those situations and circumstances. We're going to work with this. Now we're going to jump from that. And we're going to get the victory in verse 28. Let's go to verse 28. Major, you know that one. I think you want to give us that one, Major. Verse 28. Let us have it. I have a different version, so that's why I'm being, being you know, I have the new international version. Well, I just want to do 28, Major. 28 to 31. And please let me have what I want to have. Hopefully you're going to say what I want to hear in 28, Major. No, it is the same. And we know that in all things... Oh. Those who love him, Come on, Major. who have been called according Come on, to Major. his purpose. Mm -hmm. For those God first knew, he knew. Was destined to be conformed to his likeness of his son, that he might be the first bone about many brothers. Okay? Thank you, Lord. 29. So it says, and we know that in all things, we know it. All things, all things. All things. God works together for the good of those who have been called, be called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. That's what it says in your Bible. Amen. So what we're saying, and now let's get that all to all. Let's look at the step again. When we say all things, it is definitely in connection to what the step says. Someone want to read that step again? It says, we're entirely ready, entirely ready to have God remove what? 
Oh, and he just told us we know that in what? How many things? Oh, so women, every concern that you have, you can know and believe that it didn't catch God by surprise, but he's preparing you right now to have an understanding that the deepest work is right about to occur, right about now, as soon as you hook up with him, and, and understand that your, your battle is a spiritual battle. And that he, he is getting, he's predestined. This is what, this is the path that he's taking you through to have victory over what it is that you're being challenged with in every area. And I think that's pretty good when we live in God's hand because here's what he says. And I'm going to move right along. He says, and we know, you got to know this, that all things work for the what? Good. The good. good. Of just the, me and you? No. It says of every of them that love God. To them who are what? Called according to his purpose. Let's go down to 29. For whom he did foreknow. This is not new news to him. He also did predestinate to be conformed. Okay? To the image of. Go ahead, finish reading it up for me, sis. Right, you wrote, go ahead, let us have it. To the image of his son. Wee. That he might be the firstborn among many. Keep, keep it coming, keep it coming. Come on now. Moreover, whom he. Predestined, mm -hmm. these he also called, mm -hmm. whom he called, these he also justified. Hold on, hold on. Major, we say ju just as if you I had never sinned. all those things you was worried about, he got you, man. It's as if it never happened before. You've been forgiven for all those things that we discovered about ourselves, that, things that we've been challenged by, things that we've been worried about, concerns that we've had for our kids, for our family, for jobs, for roots over our head. For men that keep coming back in our life that you really don't want to see no more. Mm -hmm. For women that keep coming back in our lives that we really don't. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Right. We have been justified just as if it hadn't happened. Now, haven't right. seen. In terms of having done step number five. Let's keep to them that are also what, sis? After justified, what is that word? In whom he justified these, he also glorified. Amen. And there it is. There it is. Now, I know that was a lot, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to get us back on the right track in understanding that step number six prepares us for the deepest work, but for the greatest reward. Because he said he's a rewarder of those that, what, how, how do you seek him? Diligently seek him. And he, when he uses this word predestinated, he's already called, a, he's made, a, I tell you what, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let us have it. <laughs> Hold on, before we go there, we're going to do that predestined. I got I to gotta let my brother give it, put it on out there for us. What you want me to put out there? And you want to know, I, I kept putting you on hold for a little well, while, I, I but the deepest spiritual you know, I was, work. I was just, you know, I ain't really, because I promised I wouldn't. No, let us have it, let us have it. Uh, that, that, but can you understand what we're talking about? Bill, okay. good to see you here. See, this is that deep spiritual work. <laughs> but see, this is the thing here. In John 10 and 10, it says the devil comes to seek, kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. But the revelation of the scripture is the devil can't steal what we choose to give away. Okay. Right? You see, we always going to do these things, and we lose our kids. And uh, we lose things, but it's like we put, it's like we, we put things, when we're in a position to be with our kids, we put other things in front of us. You know, uh, we put the women in front of them. Some of the ladies, they put the men in front of their kids. And then once, it's like we don't appreciate some things until we can't have them no more. Well, I tell you what, on, on, on the strength of what you're saying, which is, which is has a lot of validity to it, but thank God we have a God that forgives us. Mm -hmm. and, and he says he's just, just, just as quick as it comes out and we acknowledge it, which is what you've just done. Just as quick as you acknowledge that. That's just how quick he forgives us of that. Right. Now, when I say predestined, I want us to turn to, to um, 1 Corinthians, and I want to say it's chapter, there it is, chapter 10. We don't catch God by surprise. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we want to look at, uh, and while, while we're working with all in all, let, let's stick with that word. I like that word all, because we, won't, we don't want to... <coughs> Give God some of this, and we want to keep some of that. Let's let's stick with the all concept. I like that all concept. So, uh, one of you sisters, if you would, I want you to read uh, verse eleven, and we want to call it a wrap. Whoa, man, he really works with this one. We'll wrap it up at verse fifteen. 
with the men as well. So here we go. Can I get a sister to read that, sister to read that for me? Any one of you ladies? Now all these things happen to them as examples. How many things? Let me ask you. How many things? All. Hey Amen. You see how we're working with the all? Keep, keep it coming, girl, sister. And they were written for our ad, 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 what? Admonition. admonition. Sounds good to me. Whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. We can't do it by ourselves. That's what he's saying. No Keep. temptation has overtaken you except such as yes, is the common... Hold on. That, read that one more time. That's the big one, sis, right there. This is what I'm saying. It did not catch God by surprise that each and every one of us are sitting in this room with the circumstances and situation that he's predestined us. He's preparing us to be better mothers, better fathers, better neighbors, better contributors, better employers, better husbands, better wives, better, 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 better. Keep reading, sis. Let's, let's have it. Okay, but God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you Don't are allow able? It. But with the temptation will also make the way for, of escape that you may be able to bear it. Mm. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. Sounds good. It sounds good. I speak to the wise men. Judge for yourselves what I say. There it is. There it is. So he says, you know what? And we're going to get into that in terms of those who lack wisdom. He says he speak he speaks to the wise person that takes that takes heed or 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 or, or, or listens to when he says uh, gives us admonition. It's in our best interest to listen to him. There is nothing that has happened to any of us at this table, and this is good news. Having done steps one through five, are you following what I'm saying? The the the, the issues that we've discovered. The things about ourselves that we discovered, the challenges that we're confronted with, it is nothing that he hasn't prepared us in terms of justified us, has already made a way of escape. And it's common. How many of us here at this table a lot of times feel as though, man, the whole world is, is just, seems like it's me against the world. It can't get no worse. You know, like, man, just when I thought it was going to get, it was at its worst. There's nothing that God gave us that we can't handle. Man, and that's that's what he's telling us, sis, at this particular time. And then he says, then he says, in addition to that, what the good news is, how about this one? Major, how about this one? I meant it, but how I'm gonna get out of it. Have anybody else? If we get to the how about this one? I think this is some good news here. I meant it. I might as well just keep doing it now. I might as well keep doing it now. I mean, you know, hey. I'm, but he says right here, let's look at this again. He said, you ain't got to keep doing that no more. That's like fleshly thought. Right. But in the spirit, he says, it ain't nothing new to me. I mean, I, I've seen this over, and I've seen it over, and I've seen it over. Hey, and guess what? I've, I've delivered people out of it once. I've did it twice. My history, I have a history of delivering people. Right. He, the children of, of Israel, even in Exodus, the Hebrews, they didn't ask for a way. Well, they didn't really make a way out. God made a way out for them too. Are you following what I'm saying? And he will make a way. You don't have to do it. All you have to do is acknowledge that I need that relationship with him. Having done this, uh, uh, look at the power passage. And then we're going we're gonna to transition right into power <laughs> passage. Major, is there something you want to say about this? No, I was agreeing you. And, and the word admonition, so you know, it, sometimes we read that big word. It means it was written as a warning. You know, like the, the old say, warning, 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 warning. Well, God's Bible warns us that these things are going to happen Happy. because of our yeah. natural desire to make bad choices, choices because we have freedom of choice. But once we make that choice, it says, no, temptation has taken you, which is common to man. Common. There's a way out. Ooh, wait. So you no longer have to say it. I, 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 man, I, I tell you what, I've done it. Mm -hmm. I, and, and you say, you know what, I'm in it now. I might as well just keep doing it now. No. He's made a way of escape. Now, whether or not you choose, and, and he's giving it to you here at Harbor Lights, believe it or not. That whole thing, and then God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted <coughs> beyond what you can bear. And you have totally surrendered almost to nothing, <coughs> because you can, you can see your way through it with God. Oh, but you have to learn to let go. And, and I like that. We, we want to get into these power passages. Yes. Let's look on page 107. And uh, yeah, our study manual right here. Well, uh -huh. 
And this is the thing I want to want to show you. If, if just take a one second on, on on page 105, at that third the, the paragraph second to the bottom, the second to the bottom where it says we are not expected. Everybody see that on page 105, that last paragraph. We are not expected. The top sentence. Mm -hmm. Are we there on the same page? That right, right, yeah, right there. We are not expected. You see that last paragraph right there, sis. Now look two sentences above it. It says. This step provides, you see that? Yes. Now I'm going to go one sentence above. It says, this is why step six is so important. This step provides us with an opportunity. As he said, he provides a way of escape. It's an opportunity mm -hmm. to become ready for God's what work? Deepest. Deepest work, which is what? Yet to come. Yet to come. And I think that's good news. Yes. The deepest yes. work is yet to come. Now let's look on page 107. It says, to be, I'll start reading in 106. To be successful with step number six, we must sincerely want to change our disabling behaviors, having done steps one through five. But even this desire to change will come from God's grace. Amen. We will wait upon his will for our lives. Our past has been dominated by our self-will, <laughs> through which we sought to control our environment. We victimize ourselves by our self-will. Rarely calling on God for help. Our life's condition shows us that self-will has never been enough to help us. Now, honest determination to eliminate our behavior flaws causes us to see God's will. Before we can accept God's help, we must relinquish our self-destructive behavior. And how do we know what that self-destructive behavior is? Having done those steps, one through five. Whatever it is that we want, jobs, our families, mend it. Uh, uh, relationships, uh, 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 to be the parent that you want to be, to be a, a, an asset to the community, to be the sons and daughters, the, the parents that you want to be, just to make, to be a game changer in your circle of influence. We do that by developing a relationship with Christ and letting God, letting God will be done. So let's look at the step number <laughs> six, the power patches. What gives us the fuel to execute these desires, to move in the direction of God? To, to be able to take advantage of new opportunities as they present themselves. To go through those doors of escape. What gives us the power to do that? The word explains. Who wants to read that? Therefore, in the shaded area. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Amen. Focus on preparation for change will encourage our faith by allowing us to gracefully detach from our past. And you know what? When he shows us these ways of escape, when he says, focus our minds on it, it's going to be revealed. But he said, even the grace that he gives us, uh, even, even these, uh, 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 these changes come from God's grace. Are you following what I'm saying? And as, he, as you continue to see somebody come to your rescue, you have a, a greater reliance on them. Are you following what I'm saying? But you have, you have to at least trust him and go to him and ask him for help. And as you see him... As these moments of, of escape come or deliverance or power over those situations and circumstances, you have a greater reliance on them. But they will be revealed in time. Let's move on a little bit further. At this point in our program, we see that this change is necessary to live life to the fullest. Recognizing the need for change and being willing to change are two different matters. The space between recognition and willingness to change can be filled with fear. As we move toward willingness, we must let go of our fears and remain secure in the knowledge that God, that with God's guidance, everything will be restored to us. Everything that we've, everything that we've been challenged by, having done steps through one through five, that we've discovered about ourselves, our weaknesses, our shortcomings, uh, 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 defects of characters will be restored to us. Now, let's go on further. It says, this fear arises when we feel as though everything is our responsibility. Something inside our head says, God helps those who help themselves. So get busy and change. Change comes from God, contrarily, not from self-will. And it comes when we are willing to let go. Who wants to read the next power passage right beneath it? Shade it here, ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Self in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Ooh, we. Lead the way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do us. Do this by learning to live in, in the light of God's love. We the new life that is possible. Mm -hmm. and, and, and He says, and He says, you know what? Before we just got through reading about He will reve
consistently. And then he says, on top of that, he says, if that's not good enough, if, if you can't, if, if that's not convincing enough, he says, I'll, I'm the one that's going to give you these desires of your heart. So don't be overwhelmed about what you've seen and discovered in terms of having done steps one through five. It's, the best news is, is that he's going to give you the desires contrary to the lifestyle that you live, those, 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 those challenges that you've been overwhelmed by, he's going to give you the desire. How many of us in this room have desires that we've yet to uh, 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 realize in our life? But, but how many have heard this where they say dreams die hard? And we, well, I, mean, I know I've got some dreams, and, I, and I'm, I'm going for them. But he says, if nobody else can give them to you, you, don't, you, you, you really don't open up to your significant other because <laughs> you, you don't think that they really take seriously what it is, even though you love them and you're not looking down on them. You don't think they take seriously the hopes, dreams, and aspirations that you have. Are you following what I'm saying? God says, give them to me, and I'm, going, I'm the one that's going to give you what it is that you want, and you can talk to me about that. And he says he's going to reveal it. Over and over and over and over again. Uh, Paul, you got an instance where you said when it, when it was an accident or something that occurred where God worked that whole situation out. I think you were on the freeway or something like that. You want to tell us a little bit about that, Paul? How God showed well, how, he was on, how he was, yeah, how he was on time in that, in that particular situation. I can't remember exactly the X, Y, Z of what happened, but it was a couple of things that I, I, I guess. Like a stormy day like today. I was, okay. I was getting off the exit because I was going to go. Uh, we do. Uh, we pick up for uh, the hunger feed program. Okay. So I was going. I was running late. So I was getting off 41st. And I look in my mirror. And all of a sudden, I see this car coming right at me, maybe 100 miles an hour. So I, I panic right away because I see a truck in this lane. So I was going to merge to the left. I was like, well, if I go that way, that truck's going to take me out. So I just punched the gas. I don't know how or what. Maybe it was the Holy Spirit or somebody. I punched the gas. The car took off. They hit me, but if I didn't punch the gas, they would have hit me at a minimal mon speed. That would have really took me out. But when he, he smashed in the back of me, my car did 380. And now I'm looking at the truck, and I'm going like this. Now the truck, he's like, you know, with this big old rig. And wow. I see him. Now I see his truck. Now we're both like... And uh, I believe it was God because I'll tell you what, if that truck would have, we would have been done. So if you would have hesitated any longer not, instead of listening to the word that was in some said move, had you not moved in terms of God making a way of escape, right. it, 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 it could have been a tragic situation. Because yeah. I looked in my mirror and I seen the truck and he was doing what I was doing. I was like, I'm just, mm -hmm. I was going, I was like, Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Now after the impact, people were just still, it was tragic. Wow. More people were coming. Boom. Wow. Boom. So I jumped out because I was, I was all right. I was uh -huh, in shock. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The guy behind me was like, mm -hmm. it was a car and there was a little baby in the back. So wow. I pulled out my knife and I, she was crying. She's like, there's my baby in the back. And they're still, boom, boom. I mean, it was like 16 cars. And I'm like, oh my God. So I, right away, I take my knife out and I cut the seat belt. And I grabbed, as soon as I got the baby out of the car, she was still, because I couldn't get to her. Boom came again got, got her but the baby was already out mm -hmm. and I'm trying to dodge because cars are like and I got this little baby carriage and I'm like oh lord please let me you know now I'm gonna get hit you know mm -hmm. they're gonna hit me mm -hmm. not the cars mm -hmm. somehow once again God got me across that road Man, God, and they were good. just still coming boom boom and the cop was like oh my god and the lady was like man you I have my salvation army thing on she goes you're an angel she because 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 the car when when mm -hmm. the baby was in the back seat the car was accordion so I don't know, I just got put me there at the right time. Right. And, and, and oh, to rescue car, the and to I, rescue the baby. I saved the life. Amen. Man, man. And I'm telling you this, if you want to look at this picture in terms of that, he has put us in a situation where we can rescue lives. You may not see the accident that could have happened or that you were in route to causing to happen, but he's put just like he put Paul, he's put each and every one of us in here to be rescuers. First of all, of ourselves, because we trust him, and secondly, of other people that depend on us. Children, loved ones. And you can just take that story and go with it. But the point of it is, in, in terms of what we said, he'll give us the desires of our heart. That kid would never know what Paul did, did in terms of rescuing him out of that, or her out of the back of that car. And guess what? A lot of you 
will never know what God did to rescue us out of the lifestyle <laughs> that we, and the road that we were headed going out of, but he's made a way of escape. God is good, man. He said he'll reveal these things to us at the right time. That kid may never know. And we may never know, but God is in it. He's in it. Believe that. You don't want him out of it. Let's move a little bit further. And then he goes on to say, uh, let's move on to the next one. After the desires on page 108. Who would like to read that one? Not that I have what? Can we get a lady over here to read that one? Would you? Yes. Not that I have already obtained all of this and have already made, been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that of which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Mm -hmm. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. The one thing I do, forget what is behind and Amen. straining towards what is ahead. Mm -hmm. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Forget the past and putting it behind us is an important element in our recovery. Now, now in terms of us giving us the desires of our heart, we may not have everything that we want and it may not have uh, happened in the time that we wanted to have it, but he says, as a good soldier, forgetting, uh, 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 just staying fast, uh, 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 forgetting those things that are behind us. He said, I may not have everything, but I thank God for the little bit that I do have. And the question becomes, are we grateful and thankful for the little things that God has done for us? The word says if we're uh, grateful over a few things or, 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 or we're obedient or, or trustworthy over a few things, he'll make us rulers. How about that? Rulers over bigger things or over many things. Are you following what I'm saying? So Paul says, not that I've got everything that I want. And ladies, men too, you may not have. When you leave here or when you're about to leave here, you may not have everything that you want. Right. But you're moving in the right direction. My brother Bill down there, let us have some insight on that, brother. Well, I, I was watching a, a John Hagee preach one morning, and, and, uh, and I kind of liked the guy. Anyway, uh, he was sort of reading the verse, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is, oh, what is ahead. And he was referring to how people reminisce in, and meditate about all the, the bad and depressing and sad stuff in the past. Mm -hmm. So basically, he screamed at his congregation, and he said, get over it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Get over it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, 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 that's what we want to do. We have some... <laughs> we, <laughs> hey, I can't add no more to that. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. It says, thanks, Bill. It says, our character defects are familiar tools. How about that? To use. The loss of them threatens our ability to control ourselves and others. There's that control element, control freak. The thought of giving up our defects may cause anxiety, but God won't remove character traits we need. When we place our trust in God, we develop a sense of comfort. Even uh, the smallest beginning, small beginnings, is acceptable to God. Scripture tells us that if we have been faith, oh, there it is over at faith. If we have faith. As, come on, as sis, let, as the straighten me out. Uh -huh. Nothing is impossible. Wait, that's good news. Keep going. When we have planted the seed of our willingness, we need to protect the tiny sprouts of positive hey. results. Come on now. We do not want the weeds of self-will to mm -hmm. overrun our new garden. Yes, garden. These seedlings of willingness respond quickly to our nurturing. Come on now. Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes all we got is a seed. A <clears throat> desire. No money, no job, no, n just nothing but a, but a seed of faith that we have in Christ. Who wants to read the next one? Do I not. Just, I, I go back to the. Come on, Major. Smack me right there when you were reading. The thought of giving up our defects may cause anxiety, mm -hmm. but God won't, won't remove do a character trait that we, we need. need. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, that's exciting. Yeah. I don't have to be changed by you. The things that are important to God, He will not take them away if I need that to uh -huh. be in balance with Him. That that got me. Go and you know what, Major? And we might as well just ride with that for a little while. <laughs> and uh, you may want to get rid of something. How about that? Yeah. You may not be sure what you should get rid of. That's right. But He said, "I ain't gonna let you get. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna let you hurt yourself. That's How about right. that?" That's right. <laughs> I ain't gonna let you hurt yourself. I ain't gonna let you do yourself wrong, man. I talk about now. That's that's pretty good. Yes. That's good news. All the times I've read that, that jumped up a boom. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not gonna take something from you that you need. Yeah. To live, 
to develop character, to be who you are. I'm, I'm not going to take it from you, but I'm going to take those defects that stop you from being all that you can be in him. But you know what, as he said. I'm outspoken, and that kind of gets me in trouble sometimes because I speak my mind. Mm -hmm. and that's, not, that's one of my character defects. But he doesn't want you to stop speaking your mind, but there's a way. I, I used to give just a quick illustration. In fact, uh, there was something, somebody was helping me one day, and security didn't realize that I, I was sitting there and they were helping me. And the person ran out of security. What are you doing? Hold that door open. And I'm sitting there, I said, they're with me, you know? Amen. And I said, it would have been so much easier, and this is how you use it, if the person comes out and said, Excuse me, young man, why are you standing there holding the door open? Do right. you have a reason? And then he could have said, well, I'm helping Major Mom because she's coming Couldn't through with nice something. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. it's, you say almost the same. So it's the way you that you say it. I got my brother right, right there. Let me have a, a bit of it. We'll move on. My brother right there. Okay. You, you going to say? Oh, it's not to what you say, it's how you say it. And yeah. that's always there true. You and you, my brother? No, I was, uh, you said, uh, Familiar tools. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sometimes God gives us different tools, and we get familiar with certain ones. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is, if a hammer is the only tool you got, I mean, every problem is going to be a nail. Mm. And go to what you said, major moms. Uh, <laughs> see, sometimes we need that intercessor. Yes. Because all the time, you know, uh, my brother keeps saying women, so I'm gonna say mm -hmm. women too. Sometimes. Women say, God, he gone. He gone, bring him back. But the intercessor need to say, no, send him to Jamaica. <laughs> you know, let him go on about his business. And see, we don't, a lot of times, we don't even know what we want. But we kill ourselves trying to get it. Hmm. Now, we're going to wrap up the rest of these. I, I would like someone to read the next one. Do not what? Do not conform. conform. I mean, conform. <laughs> right. We got you next, my sis. Go ahead. Oh. Go Any ahead. longer to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. As our minds turn from things of this world to things of God, our transformation begins. I love this. What he says is, you know what? Now, guess what? Guess what he says in terms of testing it? Having done steps one through five, run the test across it. You've had in control all that time. Having done these steps, have you brought any better results? <laughs> and then he says, compared to what I'm doing now. In the program, we got a thing called, back in the day, when I guess it's major, you've heard it. If it don't work, we gladly return your misery right back to you. <laughs> Let's go a little bit further. It says, our ability to talk to God is an important part of step number six. We need to communicate with him in a way that shows our humility and invites his intervention. We say, dear God, I want to be more patient. We are making a demand and telling God what we want. When we say, dear God, I am impatient, we present the truth about ourselves. When we pray in this manner, we exhibit humility, relinquish our pride, and ask God to act on our behalf. It's my sister down there that was going to read for us, let's have that humble what? Humble yourself before the Lord. Ain't no, I, I, I just want to just for the sake, I can't seem real good, but I believe it was, um, uh, 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 hold on, I want to get a name together, Diana Ross, say, ain't no mountain high enough, yeah, that's what it was, mm -hmm. so he's going to lift us up, it may look like a mountain to you, but he says he'll make every valley, raise up every valley, and lower every mountain. And he's going to lift us up. Who's going to read that? Now, the, sis, who's going to read that? If any of you lack, what? When we're talking to him, we don't know how to talk to him. Guess what this one says? Somebody read that one. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives, gener who gives generously Amen. to all without finding fault. And it will be given to him. <clears throat> but then he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Our doubts is overcome by our growing faith <laughs> and what we know to be true. That God, our Heavenly Father, will never forget, faith, forsake us. If you, not just have faith, but if you feed your faith, you're going to starve all your doubt. 
That's what I'm talking about. That's what, mm -hmm. hey, man, we get, you know what, we start just like anything else. And you ride the bike, first you're scared to ride that bike. And then before you know it, you, 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 you ain't got them training with you. He's like, whoa. I'm, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, you know, you know, you start. But as we feed them, we, we get surprised. And you know what, we can let go of some stuff. And we get encouraged in the Lord. We're feeding our faith. Let's look on page 110. This step requires that we look at, at the shortcomings we, we will ask uh, to have removed. We may be unwilling to give up some of them. They may seem useful to us. So we respond, I cannot give up yet. We have a potential problem if we say, I will never be any different and will never give up. These attitudes shut our minds to God's redeeming qualities and can add to our own destruction. If we respond this way to any behavior, we need to admit our doubts and struggles to God and seek his help in surrendering to his will. Now let's consider this poem that, that takes in uh, uh, what we've just read, and it's called Broken Dreams. As children bring their broken toys with tears for us to mend, I, broke my, I brought my broken dreams to God because he was my friend. But then instead of leaving him in peace to work alone, I hung around and tried to help with ways that were my own. At last, I snatched him back and cried, how can you be so slow? My child, he said, what could I do? You never did let go. So when we, this is so appropriate for this step. If you want to look at the step to remind us, it says we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. And we got to leave them in his hand. We can't go back and say, you know what, I want to do this. We, we, looked at this. we looked at and examined our real behaviors in terms of steps one through five. We're putting it entirely in God's hand. This makes it, again, one of the deepest steps spiritually. Now, sometimes we can't see it happening physically, but we have to know inside of us by faith that God is working it out. We may not be able to see it. I'll tell you what, let's turn to Romans real quick. Romans, I want to say Romans, Lord, let me have this. Romans chapter 3, I want to say. Lord, let this be the chapter. Romans chapter 3. And it says... Okay, Romans chapter 3, I want to say, uh, is it 17, oh there we go, read verse, verse uh, 17 if somebody will, one of the ladies, chapter 4, my fault, did I say 3, yeah I said 3, let's look at chapter 4, verse 17, uh, can I get one of the ladies to read that, if you will? As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Calls those things that be what? Not do not. Be not. Even if, you can't, even if you can't see it. God is calling those things that, in terms of the desires, the things that you want, he, as if they're not as if they are. Does that make any sense? So even if you can't see it, you have to believe it. God is calling. Remember we talked about interve him intervening? Right. He's intervening. He's calling. That, that's what faith is. Go ahead, brother. The Bible says walk by faith. And I'm about sight. Come on, man. <laughs> see, when, you, when, we, when we step out there on faith, but then when we see what's really happening... We just killed everything. It goes back to Adam and Eve. The Bible says the, the eyes of both of them were open and we knew. <coughs> At that point, we just knew too much. Let's go a little bit further. Who wants to read, but the Lord is faithful? The Lord is faithful and just. Read, it, read up a little bit more. <clears throat> oh. Who's going to read it? But the the, go ahead, sis. <laughs> but the Lord is faithful and he, and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. Mm -hmm. Chaos and confusion can occur when you when we experience change in our lives. When we begin to rely on God's presence within us, 
Our feelings of comfort and safety will overcome our anxiety. Okay, here we go. As we follow the principles of the program in our daily lives, this is daily, we gradually and unconsciously prepare to have our shortcomings <laughs> removed. We're moving from defects to shortcomings. Progress is being made. Sometimes we are even unaware of our readiness to have our defects moved. At first, we realize that we, ha that we are behaving differently, that we have changed. Sometimes, others note the changes before we become aware of them ourselves. Approval seekers begin to uh, function more independently. Control addicts become more easygoing and more relaxed. Caretakers become more sensitive to their own needs. People who diligently work the program as an integral part of their lives become calmer, more serene, and genuinely happy. These, see these things, as we said, we do about faith and not by they happen gradually. But people see them. They're watching. Who wants to read that in the same way? In the same way, count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Mm -hmm. Temptations hold on us is shattered by our willingness to let Christ lead us to healthy behavior. Amen. A radiant, confident person lives in each one of us. Hidden under a cloud of confusion and uncertainty, distracted by ineffective behavior. That radiant person. The more we work the program and understand ourselves, the more we feel the weight and burden of our self-defeating behavior, and the more we long to change. If someone asks us if we wanted to be free from the character defects, we could give only one answer. We are entirely ready, entirely ready to have God. Remove them. We are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen. Who wants to wrap this up on this last power passage? My sister down the end ain't read. Yeah, you thought she was going to get out of here, didn't you? And it says, I seek with all my heart. And then let my brother read right next to you, when you for the last one. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might have Amen. Praise to you, O Lord, teaching your decrees. Amen. Centering our attention on the word of God enables us to receive his teachings and do his will. My brother, would you do us the pleasure? This is the assurance that we have in approaching God. That is, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask him. Amen. Ask him. Amen. Amen. As we come closer to God in our minds and in our lives, we soon trust that he will hear us, hear our prayers, and hear us. Amen. <laughs> and I, I think we've got quite a bit in terms of moving into that next level of spiritual rea re reality of relationship and overcoming the flesh as we admit to God and to ourselves that, the, uh, no, we don't. As we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. And give yourselves a hand every last one. Amen.